So how does it, you know, working as your baby, and, you know, you give Dan Levine sort of access to the editing mode on the script, and he can sort of do a lot of things. How do you both let it go and hold on to the authenticity of it? Well, the whole um, business of, of theater, live theater, mm -hmm. is collaborative. Mm -hmm. And it's not only something that I'm used to, it's something that I really value and enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, I like the fact that a show is, you know, uh, um, made from all the people who, if you, you know, it's funny to be talking about working and say this, but all the people who work on the show bring something to it, and it, it all tends to be greater than the sum of its parts, as they say. There's a sort of gestalt thing that happens, and it's one of the things I really enjoy about theater. Um, on the other hand, Dan um, and I, because we have a very good working relationship, um, you know, we're able to talk about point of view, and he ran all the changes that he was going to make by me, and in some cases I had some suggestions, so I didn't feel as if it was just sort of, you know, taken away. Mm -hmm. So many times when you um, give a, a new version of working, it goes on and, you know, it's not just for that one place, it has more legs. Do you see that with this version? Might this go on? Well, one of the things that I'm very interested to see and that Dan and I have spoken about, but I've also talked to MTI who license working about, is to see how this works, mm -hmm. frankly. To see about the, this whole new idea that Dan came up with of doing interviews with local workers, mm -hmm. finding ways to interpolate them into the show, and thus making the show very um, specific for the community mm -hmm. in which it's being presented, if that turns out to be um, a successful way to do the show, both artistically and in terms of the audience response, then I think it may become a template for mm -hmm. other communities who are interested in doing the show. So the, the interviews that were done, they'll be shown on screens during the performance and then live actors are doing the scripts. So that is correct. The, yeah, that's the correct. local actual people who are interviewed are are recorded. Exactly right. It goes on. But of course, that was, that was a choice that, that Dan made mm -hmm. of how to present it, but it, they could just as easily be enacted. Mm -hmm. You know, their words could then be um, enacted by the cast, right. which is the, the way the show works. Now, I, I like the idea that mm -hmm. Dan came up with, the use of the audiovisual, because I think it'll make for um, an exciting theatrical mm -hmm. experience and kind of, if you will, mixed media experience. But um, places that don't have that capability don't necessarily need to do it that right. way. And so you were very involved in this, the, the new version of working. Yeah, well, I would say in, involved. I don't know that I would say very involved because I really wanted to give Dan and mm -hmm. his team uh, the opportunity to, you know, to take the show and run with it and not be the, the helicopter parent, if you will. But yeah, absolutely involved, and I'm really looking forward to participating as the show now moves towards production, and um, you know, by by attending rehearsals and mm -hmm. previews, and seeing if I have any um, thoughts or suggestions to make. Great. Um, tell me a little bit about the has technology. I mean, obviously, technology has changed dramatically in 40 years. But what has it changed about this production specifically, and just sort of the Broadway production life. Yeah, well, Broadway in general is obviously um, greatly affected by new technology in terms of um, how one can use projections, um, how one can, the sound is so much better, mm -hmm. and the way sound can be used, etc. So, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of growth in the way technology is used in live theater, and I think that's a field that has actually a lot of room for growth and mm -hmm. experimentation. 